Hey everybody, welcome to the second season of our My Growth videos. Um, so if you haven't watched season one, our first four episodes of our My Growth videos, you should definitely go back and watch those. Uh, they are entitled Forming a Relationship with God. Uh, and so there's four episodes, numbers one, two, three, and four, obviously. And those episodes will walk you through how to begin a relationship with God. They'll answer your questions on what that means and what that looks like exactly. Uh, but we're excited today to begin our second season, which is going to be on prayer. And there will be a total of nine episodes in the second season. So today is our first one. So uh, the, our fifth episode total of My Growth Videos, but the first one in our second season. And today is going to be an introduction to prayer. So again, if you haven't watched the first season, go back and watch that, uh, and then log back on to this video so that you can begin learning about prayer. So the purpose of our video today is to give you an introduction to prayer, um, and so prayer is certainly one of the most important aspects you need to understand and put into practice in your life in order to have a healthy relationship with God. So if you're gonna if you're gonna be in relationship with God, you gotta learn how to pray. So the purpose of this video and then the next eight videos is to teach you how to pray. It's not just to tell you that you need to pray. It's not just to make you feel bad if you don't pray. That's not the purpose. The purpose is to teach you how to pray. So today's video is an introduction to prayer. And I think it's important that um, if we're going to talk about prayer, we should first probably define what prayer is. So what is prayer? Prayer is simple, man. Prayer is so simple. It's just talking to God. Prayer is simply talking to God, communicating with God. That's it. That's all prayer is. And we don't need to make it more than that. We don't need to spiritualize it. We don't need to make it some form, some religious duty, or anything like that. Some activity that we have to check a checklist on. Prayer is just simply talking to God. Over time in Christianity, we have made prayer into like this religious activity that we all are supposed to do. We have to say the right things or we have to be so professional at praying, but that isn't what prayer was intended to be. Prayer is just talking to God. It's just talking to Him like you would talk to me or to anyone else, communicating with Him. The primary goal and purpose of prayer is to have time with God, to communicate with Him, to spend time with Him. It's not to get stuff. It's not to say you prayed. It's not to uh, check a box to say that you accomplished your prayer today. It's to have fellowship with with God. That is the purpose and the main goal of prayer is to have fellowship with God. So there's probably some of you out there saying right now, well, can I really talk to God? I mean, he's like, he's God and I'm just me. I'm a nobody. Can I really talk to God? Well, yeah, of course you can. Uh, our first season, season one was about forming and beginning a relationship with God. And what kind of relationship would it be if you weren't able to talk to him? You know, what kind of relationship would you have with other people if you weren't able to talk to him? God wants to be in relationship with us. That means he wants us to talk to him. He wants us to communicate with him. He wants to communicate back with us. That is how our relationship is formed. It's through talking with him and and praying. And so God is our heavenly father. And uh, just like our, our earthly father, if you have a good earthly father, uh, you know, they, they want to talk to you and communicate with you and spend time with you. The same with God. He wants to hear his children. He wants to talk to us. He wants to spend time with us. And that is done through prayer. Uh, so prayer is a huge part of being in relationship with God. Uh, and so, yes, you can pray. Yes, you can talk to God Almighty, the Lord of heaven and earth. You can definitely talk to him. The blood of Jesus has washed our sins and purified us, and it makes us able to come into his presence and to talk with him. So that's what prayer is. Jesus actually taught on prayer quite often when he was here uh, on earth in his earthly ministry. Uh, probably the most famous portion of scripture where Jesus teaches on prayer is found uh, within the 
within his Sermon on the Mount. And so I'm going to read to you uh, two different sections about prayer in Matthew chapter 6. We'll read the first half of the passage. We'll talk about that and then we'll read the second part of the passage and we'll talk about what Jesus taught us about prayer. So if you have a Bible and want to follow along with me, you're certainly uh, willing to, you're certainly uh, allowed to do that. If not, that's okay too. But Matthew chapter 6, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5 says, And when you pray, this is Jesus speaking, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth that they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close your door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. There he's talking about us, the children of God, talking to our Father. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. So we'll stop right there for just a moment. And in those few verses there in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus gave us uh, some do's and some don'ts for prayer, right? He told us this is what you should do, this is what you shouldn't do when you pray. So there's two don'ts that he lists there. First, he says, don't pray for recognition. Don't pray so that others will look up to you, so that you can put on a show, so that you can be esteemed, so that you can be seen. Prayer is not for others to look up to you. Prayer is not for you to get self-personal recognition. Prayer is not for you uh, to make others realize just how spiritual and how close you are with God. That's not the point of prayer. Jesus said prayer is a private thing. Now that doesn't mean, of course, that we're not allowed to pray in public. It's appropriate to pray in church. It's appropriate to pray um, to, to lead a prayer in church or whatever. There's nothing wrong with public prayer, but it, he's talking about the heart issue. Are you praying to be seen? Are you praying so that people say, wow, look at them praying? Or are you just talking to God? Are you talking to your Father? Are you having communication and dialogue with your Heavenly Father? Because that's the purpose. It's not to show off. It's not to brag. It's not to gain recognition. The purpose of prayer is to communicate with your Heavenly Father. The second don't that Jesus gave us was not to pray with empty words. Don't just keep babbling on. Don't just keep saying these empty things. So what does that mean? Jesus is telling us that uh, prayer isn't just a, supposed to be these this repetitious thing it's not supposed to be you know you praying the same thing over and over every day without meaning what you're saying in other words you don't just say empty words into the sky when you're praying you are talking to someone you are talking to your heavenly father you know i think about in my marriage what kind of marriage would i have if i said literally the same phrases to my wife every day Nothing more and nothing less. I said the same thing to where she could predict what I was going to say. I had like two or three paragraphs of words that I would say to her. And I never said anything different than that. Never said anything more than that. Never said anything less than that. But every day I just repeated the same phrases over and over her to, to her again. And I didn't even really look at her or act like I was talking to her or even mean what I said to her. I just said the phrases. What kind of relationship would we have based on that? We would never discuss our day. We would never discuss our plans for the future. We would never share with one another you know, goals or dreams. Or we would never talk about our children and the challenges there. We would never have a relationship. We would just have these empty phrases that we said. That's no kind of relationship at all. Yet people think that prayer is... That you know, they do that with God, and they think that's all prayer is is these hollow, empty, repetitious phrases they say over and over, day after day, time after time. That's not prayer, that's not a relationship with God. The purpose of prayer is to have a relationship with God to talk to Him, to communicate with Him. It's, it's to tell Him what's going on in your life. It's to ask for His help with the situations you're facing. It's to unload on Him. It's to vent to Him. It's to dialogue with Him and just share your heart with Him. It's to ask Him uh, what His will is for your life. It's to ask Him 
to convict you and change you and search your heart and show you things that might be wrong. You know, it's it's this this time where you're 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 spending uh, a season, a, a few moments or whatever with God, where you're communicating directly with Him, where you're having a dialogue with Him. So it's personal, it's relational, it's not just some repetitious phrase that you say to him over and over. Uh, and so after Jesus taught us those do's and don'ts, then in verse 9 of Matthew chapter 6, the Bible says this, This then is how you should pray. In other words, Jesus gives us like an example of how we should pray. He says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So many of us are familiar with that prayer. If you've been in church any length of time at all, you've you've heard that prayer and you know that that is referred to oftentimes as the Lord's Prayer. Uh, and so Jesus, after telling them, you know, you shouldn't pray to be seen, you shouldn't pray just uh, saying hollow, empty phrases without meaning them or communicating with God, he then tells us what we should do and how we should pray. And he gives us this prayer as our model prayer. And so let me sort of tell you what he was trying to do there. Um, Jesus gave us a list of ingredients by giving us this prayer, not like a standard recipe that we're just supposed to copy every time that we pray. So let me sort of expound on that and tell you the difference and explain to you what I'm trying to say. So I'm not a big cook, um, but occasionally I will cook something. And uh, so maybe there's some of you out there that are big cooks, but I am not personally. So if I'm going to cook, I need a recipe. I don't just wing it. I don't make up my own stuff. I need a recipe to follow. Uh, I want to know what someone else did and had success with. I'm not going to experiment. I'm not going to create my own recipes. I need to know someone already cooked this and it tasted good. So therefore I can try it and it should taste good for me as well. So I want specifics. I'm not going to deviate from the recipe. I'm not going to substitute. I'm not going to change it around. I'm going to follow what the recipe says because I'm not a cook. So when I look up a recipe online or in a cookbook or whatever, there's always two separate parts to that recipe, right? And the first part is simply the list of ingredients. It tells you what you need to gather, what ingredients you need to gather in order to cook this this uh, food item. So it tells you how much and it tells you what to get. It tells you the list of ingredients. That's all of the ingredients you're going to need to cook this particular dish. And when Jesus was giving us the Lord's Prayer, that's what he was doing. He was giving us the list of ingredients to prayer. Uh, it was not just this recipe that we stick to and just say that Lord's Prayer over and over and over. So in other words, you know, a prayer life is not waking up every morning and before your feet hit the ground, you say the Lord's Prayer. That's not a prayer life. That's not what Jesus was doing when he said, pray like this. It wasn't giving us one prayer that we pray over and over and over. He was giving us the ingredients. This is a list of ingredients. These are things that you should be, these are things that should be included in your prayer life. He wasn't just giving us a list that we're supposed to copy phrases that we're supposed to say. We already talked about how he said, don't do that, right? He said, don't just have him empty hollow repeated phrases but have a dialogue a communication a relationship with your heavenly father so there the lord's prayer and other prayers that are similar to that they're not just something to be copied repeated daily weekly monthly whatever um and so th there they're to guide us and teach us the ingredients of prayer. That's the purpose of the Lord's Prayer. It's not about saying the right words. It's about communicating with God. So so what are you saying, Pastor Brandon? Are you saying that re repetitive prayers are wrong? Um, no, I'm, I'm not saying that they're wrong. I don't think it's wrong to say the Lord's Prayer uh, just exactly as it's written in Scripture. But if you're going to do that, you know, make sure you're communicating with God as you're doing it. Don't just say it into the empty air as like um, uh, uh, something off the top of your head. 
you know, make sure you are saying that from your heart to God's. Make sure you're communicating with Him, that you're praying that prayer to God. People also do this with the serenity prayer and other prayers. It's not wrong to pray those prayers, but don't just let it be hollow words. Don't allow it to become some hollow form, some repetitive thing you pray, you pray to just like make you feel better, like you check this box. Say it to God. Say it as if God were sitting right there listening to you because he is listening to you. So just like you would have a conversation with me or someone else, when you pray, even if you're using a repetitious prayer, you know, pray it to God. God. Say it directly to Him. Uh, and then I would encourage you to expound upon it a little bit and, and say it in your own words instead of just quoting a, a, a prayer from Scripture or a prayer from a card. Expound upon it and say it in your own words to God, how you would communicate those same principles you, you've said in the repetitious prayer to God. So uh, remember, the goal isn't just to say you've prayed. It isn't just to check a box or feel good that you prayed today. The purpose is to communicate with God. It's to be in relationship with Him. It's to develop that relationship with Him. So you can use a standard prayer, but just make sure you're meaning it and you're talking to God. So uh, that's, uh, I think, a pretty decent introduction to what prayer is. It's communicating with God. It's not a form. It's not a recipe. But we do have, Scripture gives us a list of ingredients of things that should be included in our prayers to guide us. So I hope that gives you a little better understanding of what prayer is. Just so you know where we're headed in the, in the upcoming videos, I've got eight more videos on prayer. And uh, how those videos are going to work is we're going to go over one ingredient or one element listed in the Lord's Prayer about what should be included in our prayers. So we're going to take that Lord's Prayer one ingredient at a time, one element at a time. We're going to discuss each element and help you incorporate those into your daily prayer time. So uh, that's what the next eight videos will look like, one element each of what should be included in your prayer time. And by the end of these nine videos, you should have a good idea of what your prayer life will look like because you've been taught that prayer is communication with God, nothing more than that, just simply talking to Him. And then you've been taught about what, you know, some of the ingredients of what that conversation should look like. And so as we've learned that prayer is just simply communicating with God. That's what I want you to spend some time doing today. So uh, once we're done with this video, just take 10 minutes, 15 if you want, but take some time, set it aside, and just simply talk to God. Act like He's right there in the room with you because He is. The Bible tells us He's omnipotent. He's everywhere all at the same time. So just take some time today and, and spend time talking with God. You say, what, do, what should I talk about with Him? Well, we're going to get into that in the upcoming eight videos about the elements of prayer. But, you know, for today, just talk to Him about anything. Talk to Him about your day. Talk to Him about your struggles. Talk to Him about His goodness and how awesome He's been to you. Uh, whatever you want to talk about with the Lord, just spend some time, 10-15 minutes today, talking to God. And that is, uh, that is how you begin learning how to pray. And so uh, take that time today, and it'll be so worth your while. And I believe God's going to show up right there, and you're going to feel His presence, and you're going to feel a connection with Him as you talk to Him. I, I'm, I'm so thankful for you logging on to, to Season 2 and learning how to pray with us in our My Growth videos. So uh, stay tuned for the next episode in which we will begin talking about the ingredients of prayer. So God bless you. I love you. We'll see you next time.